Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions this morning with Pat. Uh oh, look the hidden Jesus. I didn't put on a sweater vest today. I got to put on a sweater vest before I go because I am cold. It's five degrees here in Wisconsin. And cold. Not cold at the moment in the house because I've been doing stuff. But if, once I get to the church, it's going to be cold. Good morning. Glad you're here with us for a little time in God's Word on this Thursday morning here uh, as we have our daily devotion together. Thursday, I'm headed to uh, uh, Rhinelander today, a um, little off schedule. We're doing it the first Thursday of the month because we had Thanksgiving and stuff on the others. So I'm already behind before I even start again. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, if everything goes right, I got to talk with them tonight. But if, uh, if all things hold together as they should, uh, tomorrow I'll be joined by uh, Pastor Jerebeck again. And uh, the two of us will be uh, sharing the devotion with you together. Um, so that'll be, that'll be, well, you guys, many of you said that was a, a good thing. So we'll, we'll do that again. Um, he and I are trying to figure out a way to do it a little more often even. Um, Fridays work well though. So 
So good morning. Uh, let's see who's here with us. No commemorations today, and I do have to keep moving. So Jerry, good morning. Cold December day. You are right. It is. Glenn, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, hello, hello, hello. Verna, good morning. Connie and Robin, good morning. Yeah. Maybe we'll see you later for the uh, uh, midweek service today. Oh, I jumped. Uh, uh, Mike and Karen, good morning to you guys. Renee, good morning. Jill and John, hello, glad you're here. Kathy, good morning. Ashley, good morning for you. We'll continue to pray for uh, Deanna. Uh, today also, uh, unless you have an update for us. So, uh, with that, uh, no messing around here. Let's uh, get headed into this. Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, if you'd like to join me there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it, is, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, where to go? Our psalm today, Psalm 34, verses 11 through 18. Psalm 34, 11 to 18. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and keep your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. There's Bonnie popping up with our weather report for Irma here. Yeah, cold. Four degrees. I lost a degree. My phone said five. Just one thing here. Well, two things. Verses 17 and 18. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. That is those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Who he has made righteous by his blood. One thing. Second thing. The Lord nears the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. There is a, a, a passage, um, and I don't remember where it is. It's in one of the Gospels where Jesus is talking about the cornerstone. Um, and um, that cornerstone uh, will fall on some and crush them and grind others to powder. Um, uh, or no, some will fall upon the cornerstone and be broken, others will be crushed to powder by it. Um, the ones who fall on the stone, those who have faith in Christ, who put themselves in, in well, you don't put yourself, but are, 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 are drawn to the cross, if you will. Um, those are the ones brokenhearted, and uh, those are the ones who are saved, crushed in spirit. That's a little esoteric, but I'm kind of moving along today. So let's, uh, let's get to Isaiah here. Um, Isaiah 7, verse 10 through 8, 8. We're picking up where we left off yesterday. Isaiah 7, 10. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, when we ended, because I, I remember saying this, um, we went through King Ahaz uh, was getting a message from the Lord from Isaiah the prophet. Um, the Lord had said to Isaiah, go out and meet Ahaz, um, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field and say this to him. And it ended with, if you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. Okay, and then we pick up here at verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Now, the Lord speaking through the mouth of Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. 
Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. And I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. And that day the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt, and for the bee that is at the end, that is in the land of Assyria. <clears throat> and they will come and settle in the steep ravines and in the cliffs, clefts of the rocks, and on the thorn bushes and on all the pastures. In that day, the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired beyond the river with the king of Assyria. The head of the hair of the feet, the head, oh, the head and the hair of the feet. And it will sweep away the beard also. Really? Uh, in that day, a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep. And because of the abundance of milk that they give, he will eat curds. For everyone who is left in the land will eat curds and honey. In that day, every place where there used to be a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels of silver will become briars and thorns. With bow and arrows a man will come there, for all the land will be briars and thorns. And as for the, all the hills that used to be hoed with a hoe, you will not come there for fear of briars and thorns, but they will become a place where cattle are let loose and where sheep tread. Then the Lord said to me, Take a large tablet and write on it in common characters, belonging to Mahar Shalal Ash Hash Baz, and I will get a reliable witness and it, bleh, and I will get reliable witnesses, Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeb Jer, Jer, mm, to attest for me. And I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Mahar Shalal Hashbaz, for before the boy knows how to cry, my father or my father, my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again. Because this people has refused the waters of Shiloh, that flow gently and rejoice over reason, and the son of Ramalia. Therefore, behold, the Lord is bringing up against them the waters of the river, mighty and many, the king of Assyria and all his glory. And it will rise over all its channels and go over all its banks, and it will sweep into Judah. It will overflow and pass on, reaching even the neck. Uh, and the, its outspread wings will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, you know that Emmanuel means God with us. There, there, there's no question about that. So the Lord is speaking to King Ahaz through the mouth of Isaiah, his prophet. Prophets proclaim and speak God's word to his people. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in the background here. I'm pulling up a little something because I want to double check a thought before I said it. Um, and God says to Ahaz, uh, ask what you will of the Lord. Um, and Ahaz says, no, 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 no. I will not test the Lord. But friends, I want to tell you that if God, there is a, there is a passage that says, 
you will not test the Lord of your God, or you shall not test the Lord your God. Um, so he's not wrong in that. But if God says to you, ask whatever you would ask from the, what was this, from the uh, uh, a deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. Ask for anything in creation. If, if this is asked for by God, then you, you, uh, you give it. Um, you, 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 you do. Um, this is what Luther says here, because when he says a, a virgin shall uh, conceive and bear a son, and shall, you shall call his name Emmanuel, of course, it's pointing to a, a now and a not yet. It's, it's pointing to something that will happen within Ahaz's lifetime, Isaiah's lifetime. Um, but he's also pointing to the coming of Christ, God with us, Emmanuel. Um, and so this is what Luther says. He says, he says, he foretells two signs, one hidden, uh, the other open. The latter, he explains in chapter 8, verse 3, which you heard today also, in a way much different from Hosea chapter 1. Well, now i got to go look at Hosea at some point. But Isaiah includes both signs. The first one does not apply to, to Ahaz because he did not live to see it. But the second one does. But since now he resists the word of God and refuses a sign, how can his faith be strengthened? Right? Signs are to strengthen our faith. That's the purpose of, that's why Jesus did all the signs that he did, the healing and the feeding the 5,000 and uh, the raising of the dead. Those signs were to prove who he was and strengthen faith. Therefore, the prophets speak of a sign to come against which they will dash, just as a sign of Jonah was given to the Jews, right? The, the Jews said, we demand a sign. And Jesus said, you, the sign you receive, the sign this generation will receive is the sign of Jonah. Uh, that is a man dead for three days, rising again. Three days in the belly of the fish. And those who refuse to believe will perish. Nevertheless, it is a sign of lifting up and building up and strengthening for those who believe. This is the summary of this chapter until the end. Because he says that this prediction is already in the process of fulfillment in these unbelievers. Um, uh, the, the word... Oh, yeah, the, there's an argument always over the word virgin here. Virgin shall conceive a son, Alma is the Hebrew word, and it can mean virgin maiden. Um, it's closely, closely related to um, a Hebrew word, Bethula, uh, which means, which normally means virgin, a, a woman who is not laid with a man. Um, so the, the, the Greek is, ah, that's, you don't care about that. Um, so Luther notes there's two signs. On one hand, the Lord is promising Ahaz that in, in uh, short order, during the nine months of the weaning process of a typical childbirth, he will deliver Judah from the two kings, threatening them. <clears throat> In fact, their subjects would be swept, uh, fully swept away by exile. Um, on the other hand, the Lord promised something remarkably different from a typical pregnancy, a miracle that would have shocked Ahaz's unbelieving heart. A virgin would conceive. The Lord has... Uh, eternal salvation of you, not simply Judah's temporal deliverance. Um, and of course, in the New Testament, the, the New Testament, we, we understand that Emmanuel, God with us, is the coming of the, of the Christ child, of, of uh, Jesus, the incarnation of God's only begotten son uh, through the birth of a, of a maiden who had not ever lied with a woman, lain with a woman, ever, never lain with a man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, son of God, born of Mary. Uh, by the work of the Spirit. Uh, curds and honey here. You, you see curds and honey showing up. Um, of course, this child will eat curds and honey, but then the people will eat nothing but curds and honey because uh, the, the land will be fallow. It will be nothing but weeds and briars. Um, uh, and, and, but animals can eat weeds and briar, and bees can uh, briars flower, blossom, and they, they can make honey. And so curds and honey, well, well, curds and honey are kind of a child food. They're also a survival food, right? If you've got cattle, and if you and the cattle can eat the briars and the thorns, um, and you've got bees, uh, and the and the bees can make honey, you you can make curds and honey, right? Curds is it's cottage cheese. Think of think of cottage cheese when I say curds, um, and, and that that by having curds it preserves the milk. You don't you don't have to throw it out when it sours. Um, 
So the idea here is that the land is going to be laid fallow when, when God sends his people to Babylon, when he uses Assyria to, to uh, destroy Israel, the, the northern kingdom, and, and Nebuchadnezzar to take uh, Judah, the southern kingdom, into captivity in Babylon. Um, and he makes the fields go fallow. He makes the fields no longer produce. Uh, he will still provide for that 10% that he was talking about that remain there, the, the faithful remnant in Judah. But they'll be, they'll be living on, sus, on, on um, subsistence. They're not, they're not going to be thriving as they were promised in the land. Um, but again, God doesn't forget his people, does he? Even though he's doing these great things um, to remind those who are turned away from him of their sin and what they've done and to punish them, uh, he, he, uh, still remembers his faithful, just as he kept Daniel in the leadership of Babylon and Medea and, and Persia uh, to care for his people. So also he here he, there will be sustenance living, uh, subsistence living in, in Judah until the people return. And he once again uh, blesses the land and makes it fertile. So that's, that's Isaiah today. Um, Oh, the ma ma uh, the Mahar Shalal Shalal Hashbaz. Um, I wanted the translation of that. Um, that's the beginning of chapter eight. Um, this is the no. Okay, this is Isaiah's older son's name. Um, mm, let's see. Uh, uh, you know what? I really wish it had given me a translation here. I wonder if I go into the text here, if I can pull it up. Oh, they they changed it from 2001 to 2002. I, you know what? It doesn't it doesn't tell me here either. Oh, okay. So Mahar is to hasten. Uh, Shalal um, is booty or, or plunder. Um, uh, uh, okay, so yeah, the idea here is that that the plunder or the booty or the bounty um, is owned by uh, Isaiah's uh, oldest son. Um, uh, uh, oh, note. What's this note? Oh, my. That's the same note I was looking at. That doesn't help anything. Uh, all right. Well, let's leave Mahal Shalal Hashbaz there. Um, and let's go to our prayer of the day because I'm <laughs> time is fading on me quickly. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Let us let us pray. The Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue uh, with uh, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In our prayers for 
uh, those today who are have asked for our prayers or our needs will dispense with our daily prayer today. But um, let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, manifold are the blessings that we receive in your Son, Jesus Christ, but most greatly is the comfort that we know that we have nothing to fear and nothing will harm us, uh, that, that you already know the end of our days and the length of our life, and that our strength comes not from within ourselves, but from you, O Lord. This day be with Deanna as death draws near. We ask you also to be though with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, uh, the, the weakening of age or the, the uh, distraughtness of illness. We ask especially for Annette, and Pam, Peter, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, hey, good morning there, Neely. Oh, and Kelly, good morning, too. And Debbie, I see you and Grant and Ann showed up, too. So I got to run. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow, perhaps, uh, with a little a little company with Pastor Jerebeck as well. We'll, we'll see. God's peace be with you. We'll see you uh, tomorrow.